Hello my loves, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. My name is Jess, if you're meeting for the first time, welcome. I'm gonna be doing your reading for you. This candle is, believe it or not, very, very special to me. I got it when I was at the Archangel Michael altar in Tarpon Springs. It wasn't this year, it was actually last year, but I felt so called to light it and share it with you guys right now. Now, I feel like I haven't done a reading for the collective here on my YouTube channel for maybe not a minute because I pretty much upload once every week or so, but I was doing one of the daily readings for my Bahati Life, Bahati Love Note subscribers. And during that reading, after, towards the end of it, I got this really strong sense to keep going, which makes me believe that there is an, addi an additional message that is meant to reach you right now at this moment in time. So I want to invite you to nestle in to a cozy chair, a cozy space, grab a blanket, grab some tea, grab some coffee or a snack or take a sip of water and just allow me to shuffle and pull cards for you. Already the cards are starting to jump out. I don't know which one this is, but we will find out very, very shortly. So the Oracle cards that I will be shuffling and pulling from will be linked down below in my Amazon storefront, of course, for those cards that can be, oh, sorry, I just looked at that. <laughs> for those cards that can be linked down below because I believe that this card or this deck can't be found on Amazon, but we will find out shortly. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect with the cards and get quiet for a moment. Please use this time to set your own intentions, to vibe out, whatever it is that works for you. Again, this is your time, so do with it whatever you will. Angels and guides from the highest lights of the universe. I thank you so much for this moment. I call in your blessing and your protection over me and the reader as we begin to look for you and look towards you for light, for direction, for clarity, for guidance, for insight, for blessings. What is the message? What is the vibe? What is the energy that you would like to share with the viewer now? Give me the clarity and the discernment to be able to see and to hear everything that it is that you want me to see and to hear and give them the discernment to know what is for them and what should be released and let go. Beautiful angels and guides, I thank you again and I ask that you protect me I ask for your blessing I ask for your peace I ask for the divine's grace and it's with love all the love in my heart that I give gratitude to this moment and to you of course the viewer It's interesting because I'm feeling a lot right now. And then I'm also, not only am I feeling the intensities of this feeling, which I haven't felt this yet, so because I've never had this feeling, I, it's hard for me to put it into words, so that's number one. But number two, there's the other side of me Jess, the Jess who's not channeling right now, who almost wants to laugh because the the Jess who is channeling saw a vision of mashed potatoes or like a potato. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I, I just now I heard the word outrageous and spirit is referring to our experience here on earth is specifically outrageous like it's just so wild sometimes and 
as I'm saying that, the fact that I'm smiling is the energy that our angels and our guides want us to have as we're going through life. Whatever it is that we're facing, try to face it with a sense of humor, even if it's heavy or hard to hold, or even if you don't know what's next, or even if you have these goals and these ambition or things that is that you want to do, you want to achieve, you want to accomplish. Try to laugh at the outrageousness of life as much as you can. Probably not in every single moment, but try to incorporate the ability to look at life and the moments to come through a lens of humor. When it comes to the potato, this for me represents simplicity in life and how simplicity can be divinely nourishing for our spirit and our energy and the vibe. I also heard for someone that you are not your accomplishments. I also heard, interesting, I heard the word ideal image and I know that to be a like a laser hair removal studio, but so I don't know if that's something specific for someone, but I'm also hearing it and seeing it as this hyper focus on who or what you could be or what you should be. This energy of like expectancy and spirit wants to kind of discard that and push that away. That's not real. It's actually harmful to you. Spirit is inviting you or someone to revisit the simple life. I'm also seeing um, someone like gathering herbs from a farmer's market or growing your own herbs. The benefit of growing your own little things, like even if it's like basil and on a windowsill and how beneficial that is. It, there's something about having something as simple as a basil plant growing on your windowsill, which talks to the universe and talks to the divine and talks to mother earth and talks to the earth elements, the earth energies that reminds you that you're a part of this greater, all of this, like all this greater life that's happening, that you are, a, that you're vibing with this life. Like you have, <clears throat> sometimes when we're so having these like cerebral moments like we're so stuck in our heads and our thoughts it can be so tough sometimes to see things through the lens of spirit is saying that of a ladybug it's about simplifying your experiences and simplifying your life down so that you can see things for what they truly are instead of Hoarding in your energy, even though you don't realize you're hoarding in your energy, baggage, expectations, and you're, you might be doing damage to your, your, your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies because of what you believe or what you can't surrender, what you can't let go. I don't know why they're saying like, Look at, look at it through the lens of a ladybug. If it wouldn't bother a ladybug, don't allow it to. Or what could a ladybug do in the situation to make it better? I know some of you guys are probably like, this girl is crazy right now, but um, and that's fine. But it's, it's about simplicity. It's about our ability, like as human beings, just because we have the capacity to do so much, should we be doing so much? I also, Spirit is asking me to remind us that at the beginning of life on earth, human beings were meant to be the protectors of the earth, the guardians of the earth, and it's almost like we forgot that. And with all the busyness of our minds that we've, the earth is starting to ache, not only for our attention, but also for us, because we are a part of this vibe. Like we are, we are living, breathing, beings on this planet and everything is connected and everything is a vibe and if one person is off or void or feels absent or disconnected it 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 impacts the whole 
So spirit is referring to how simple and beautiful and abundantly provided for you will feel at the simple act of choosing an herb, an herb plant, and tending to it, caring for it, and also incorporating that herb into your food. So think about if you are taking care of this herb plant and you're watering it and you're talking to it and it's sitting on the windowsill and it's watching these cycles and moments of your life kind of passing by but you 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 you're giving it all this life and energy and at some point it's time for you to pick said herb right it's time for you to pick the herb and then begin to put it in your food and put it in your meals and the slow savoring of that moment where you can sniff the herb and vibe with the plant's essence, it helps to ground you and connect you. And all of what you gave to it, it's giving back to you. And that's exactly how spirit wants everything in your life to be. This act of balance and love and recipro reciprocity you gave to me, I naturally am giving to you because what we have here is so special. This is what abundance looks like. Anything else is going to be noise. I want to talk to you guys. I just saw the chariot card. I was looked down at the very beginning and as I closed my eyes and took a deep breath just now, I started to see the chariot card once again. So Spirit wants to talk to you about the path. There's other cards here. I haven't looked at them. I'm going to push them off to the side. Spirit wants to talk to you about the path. Like what's ahead for you, goals you're going to take, goals you're going to, goals you are living in, things that it is that you want to take, that you want to accomplish, that you want to achieve, that you want to go after. The direction that it is that you're moving in your life that's what the divine is wanting to talk to you about right now so let's go ahead and look into that and if you want reference we have again the chariot card right here well these cards definitely want to come out interesting so these two cards either i didn't shuffle well or this is synchronistic and that they're jumping out again if i didn't shuffle well it's okay um because the this message was also really important and powerful from bahati love notes basically it's for those of you guys that don't know bahati love notes is where i shuffle and pull cards for the collective every day smaller group than the youtube channel way more intimate i'm kind of entering into a more intimate season within my life which i love but with the sun card here and the nine of wands one of the things that stood out to me with the sun card and i said this during for those that were um, receiving the read, the reading from bahati love notes i felt the power of this stag energy and the sun card typically represents joy enthusiasm optimism excitement positivity health vitality but in this card it's so interesting to me how very strong and focused and balanced and grounded this energy is and that's the energy that i believe that spirit wants to incorporate for you is that when you are connected to the elements when you are grounded when you are stabilized you will begin to get a natural sense a higher vibration of how interconnected you are to every single thing on this earth every single living thing that is good and pure and holy on this earth you are connected to and it can be tough sometimes to get back to this space right here of balance and meditation and understanding and grounding because from this moment we tend to receive a lot of messages, a lot of guidance, a lot of clarity that begins to set the wheels into motion for what's to come next, for what you want to do, for what you want to achieve, for what you want to activate. And there are so many times in your journey and your experience where you're going to stop and go back to the same spot this grounded center stabilized meditative position and realigned to the very thing that started the movement from from the jump 
if you can get to that point, right, even with this chariot card here, do you see how this person's moving, but they're holding the sun flower emphasis on the word sun, the sunflower. So they're holding the energy of the sun within their hand. The sunflower focuses, worships the sun, follows the sun. Wherever the sun goes, you better believe the sunflower is going to follow. So even though this person is moving through their life, with direction, with clarity, they know what they want, or they're ambitious, or they're working on balance or control, or they have goals, whatever that case, whatever it was that came from this space where they sat with themselves, where they were centered within, them, within themselves, hopefully, fingers crossed, they're still carrying that energy with them in motion, in movement. And at this point in your journey, spirit wants to say that wherever you are right now, whether you are in active movement and motion, AKA tapping into your masculine energy, or if you are in a more soft, receptive, attracting, restorative season within your life, AKA leaning into your feminine energy, Remember where your power came from, where your guidance came from, and where source, love, and light comes from. You are a reflection of that, and wherever you go, carry that with you, even if things are moving quick, or even if you're resting and it's solid and stable. It's so interesting to me, the cycles in our lives, when we're meditative, we're at our altars, we are talking to our parents, talking to our guidance counselors, talking to a wise person that we respect. We And we, in that moment, we feel so connected. We feel so understood. We feel so seen. We know what's next for ourselves. And then from that, the motion starts to roll within our lives because we know we feel we, we feel the, the purpose of the path. We feel it. We know it. We sense it. So everything goes into motion. But if we stay in that motion for too long, the balance starts to tip. You might get a little frazzled and exhausted and you might, the same thing that got you started along that path is the same thing that you will begin to crave and need or return to once again. And at this time that I'm doing this reading for you guys, Mercury is currently retrograde. So, <clears throat> so don't be surprised if in your movement now in your day-to-day -day activities, if spirit is calling you to align with this energy of grounding, meditation, purpose, so that wherever you are on the path, it feels again, restorative to you. And that we're not expanding as we're expanding, we're not um, expanding parts of ourselves that create chaos within our bodies, confusion, disconnection, that's when you start getting manipulated. That's when you start feeling lost. That's when you start feeling disconnected. The next few cards that showed up, wow, I love this. We have King of Cups and the Prince of Cups here. But do you notice how she's sniffing this herb, this flower? That is so telling. That's exactly the energy that I was seeing here. King of Cups is so lovely, so stable, so supportive. I also get this really strong sense of like pride, not from an egotistical place, but from a heart center where this person's heart or your heart is swelling in a good way with happiness and joy and gratitude for the journey. Also, I see this as a guide, some type of, whether it be an ancestor, I see this a, a thousand percent as a guide that is looking at your journey and looking at the path and is so proud of your accomplishments, of course, but you as a person and how you've been navigating through your accomplishments, through your things that you've been working towards, whether that be navigating through marriage, um, working your way up the corporate ladder, starting, ending a business, um, expansion of your health, taking care of yourself, quieting away from the rest of the world, whatever it is that you have here, guys. Also, I just felt really strong, strongly called to speak a blessing over that part of yourself. The same part of you that is probably blessed or might be giving you a hard time or maybe everything is good, it doesn't matter. Speak a blessing over it. It reminds me um, years ago, my best friends and I, we all got together at my house in Collingswood. Well, not my house. I, we were renting it. 
I had a bunch of roommates, but my best friends came and we rallied together and we all got, I got them basil plants. And within the basil plant, each one of us, we wrote an intention for ourselves and a, a, a prayer of protection and blessing for our friendship. We planted the, the, each one of our intentions in a, a longer pot. There was three basil plants and we planted each one of them in a pot and we watered it. When I tell you, we had a bunch of other plants on that house, like in, on the porch of that house. So many storms came in, ice storms, rain, brutal wind, me not watering the plants forever. <laughs> and for whatever reason, those, those basil plants, the dirt was dry as hell. It never gave out life. It never gave up. It never gave up. That plant stayed green for the entirety of the time that it was that I was living at this house with my one other roommate who ended up being towards the end of the journey. She started getting a little toxic because she was feeling, she was just going through a lot of things at the time and was coming from a really hurt place. And she actually ended up taking those basil plants, who does this, rip them out of the soil, knowing what they represented and throw the, threw them into the trash the day of trash day. And I was just like, I'm leaving this house because who does that? <laughs> but it just goes to show, and our friendship, by the way, is still not hurt my friendship with my roommate, actually. That said a lot to me because I'm really big on magic and intention. Who does things like that? But my friendship with those girls still stays. They're my sisters to this very day. We still come back to each other and we still talk about those basil plants. And we still refer to those intentions years ago. It must be like 15 years ago now at this point. Also not missed on me or by me that I was even referring to the basil plant. So maybe that's an herb that ends up standing out to you, but please listen to your intuition when you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or your local plant shop, or if you ask your neighbor for some of them, for them to share their basil with you or your mom or whoever the case is, look towards that. Actually, it's so funny too, because Five of Cups is the card of disappointment and what was lost. And it kind of reminds me of the feelings that I felt like, oh my God, like, I can't, back to the basil plant, I couldn't believe that she pulled the plant out. That showed her character, that showed her, her intention. And that was one of the reasons why I was moving out of the house and moving on and that just started again, the journey and the chapter, the next chapter within my life. I was ready, I was ready, I was ready. And that was actually, now that I think about it, that was the start, the beginning of Bahati life. One of the very beginnings of Bahati life because it was in that house, I remember I would pray to Archangel Michael. And did I not say that? Oh my gosh, yes, because I had a candle burning. I would pray to Archangel Michael and I'm just like, yo, what's next, what's next? And I heard Archangel Michael say to me, now is the time, now is, now is your time. I remember my first feeling, I panicked. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. <laughs> you don't sit in your room under the light of a full moon, probably an eclipse, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a tor if it was a Scorpio lunar eclipse, similar to the one that is that we are creeping up on now. Um, but you don't sit in your room in the dark, staring up at the moon, praying to Archangel Michael, praying for a miracle in some direction because there was tension in the house and I didn't know what was going to happen next. And all I had was my magic, my intention, my beliefs, my faith. And I heard you don't hear the voice of an angel, and then not be like, "Yo, I'm about to die. <laughs> it's over for me." <laughs> Um, but seriously, actually guys, that's actually the next thing. Look, we have the lover's card here and we have the high priestess. For those of you guys that don't know, the lover's card is ruled by the energy of Gemini, but it's also connected to Archangel Gabriel and Archangel Gabriel is the messenger. So honestly, someone here needs to really go to do the Archangel Michael prayer or light a candle, follow the instructions. I'll link it down below. Some of you guys have already done it. Or this is tell, this might be a cycle where you've done it before in the past because this is not the first time that we've talked about this on my YouTube channel. We've talked about this multitude of times on my YouTube channel, but you might, the, from the last few times, look at from the last time you prayed and you asked for help and you asked for guidance and you, and where you're at now, what happened in those in-between times, especially if you were constant with your prayers, with setting your intention. Oh my gosh. And then now I'm looking at it, we have another Archangel here. I believe this is Archangel Raphael, but I am 
drawing a blank right now. If you guys can let me know down below for the temperance card, I'm really forgetting it right now, but very similar energies to the lovers. And it comes through your intuition. It's, even though those lovers cards does represent connection to partnership and union, divine union, divine relationships, it also is with like other human beings. It can also represent the alignment that comes when you hear from your angels and your guides what is next for you and intuitively you understand and you know. You hear it, you know, you heard the voice and now you know where you're going. Now you know what's next. I don't get a, a feeling here at all, a threat of don't mess up or if you don't come to your angels and your guides that things aren't going to work out i don't get that i actually feel that it if you go to this space right now the sun card here energy go to that meditative space where you sit with yourself you connect you reflect with the divine ask for guidance ask for a divine intervention and look for the signs or wait for the signs be patient with the signs respect the signs respect what you hear you are not going to waste time is what i'm going to say you're not going to waste time you're going to have a, a, a very strong sense that things are ultimately working out in your favor they are going to be divinely looked over and seen some of you guys the next card that i have here oh my gosh and then we have the king of cups again love it some of you guys with the emperor card showing up you've been in you've been driving you've been driving is what is it called when you are the the main driver the person you've been behind the steering wheel for your life in this season of your life and there's nothing wrong with that Especially if you are going back to your angels and your guides or a counselor or someone who you, who is, can advise you, whether it be in the physical realms or the spiritual realms. Actually, this card just flipped over, Four of Cups. Some of you guys might be not incorporating spiritual guidance and insight into this and your, your guides are calling you out right now. <laughs> They're calling you out. So... Um, if you were to go to your angels and guides right now and sit with them and talk with them and receive from them, you wouldn't be wasting any time, not at all. And I also get the strong sense of don't let it be a one and done type of circumstance. The, keep the, them in the conversation, keep them in the conversation, keep including them, keep talking to them. I know that for many of you guys, you're like me where the full moons, new moons are very significant times eclipses bring a lot of fear but some of you guys do set intention or pray or go to your altar but I'm, i want to say don't let those be the only times when you go to your altar don't let that be the only time when you pray don't let that be the only time when you meditate don't let that be the only time when you go for that walk along the beach let this be a constant relationship an intimate relationship that it is that you have with your higher self the divine your angels and your guides your ancestors archangel michael archangel gabriel Whoever, whoever, whatever floats your boat or finds your lost remote. All right. So now let's look at our Oracle cards. I don't know why I heard. Ooh, I'm shaking. <laughs> okay. Hi, John the Conqueror. Power and command. Very powerful card, but with power comes great responsibility. And with power and responsibility, it is very essential it is vital that you consult the greats aka the divine your angels your guides your ancestors whoever okay make sure that when you are conjuring when you are commanding your ship when you are moving forward with life when you are entering into the next chapter the next stage the next cycle within your life that it is being led by this sunflower, AKA the part of you that was divinely lit up by divine intervention or the call, the voice of an angel, your guides, your higher self, your heart, or, or a wiser person that is, has genuinely has your best interests at heart. 
Wow. The next card we have here is maturity and experience. So there is a very strong, um, there's a strong message about recognizing your path thus far. I don't feel like this is a new journey or new chapter. I also felt that when I was shuffling the cards for Bahati Love Notes. Should I keep it at $5, by the way, guys? Oh my God, that's a question I should bring to my guides. Actually, I'm gonna bring it to my guides and I'm gonna ask you, what do you think is a fair price for Bahati Love Notes? Subscription. It's at $5 right now, but daily readings every day, I've been considering. So actually, yeah, random, <laughs> random. What do you guys think is a fair price? I have some friends who'd be like, charge, da, 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 and I'm just like, no, I get it. But um, I, I guess I'm asking you, and that, maybe that is in my own experience now that I'm even thinking about it. It's interesting that that came through, maturity and experience and power and command. Because in my own experience, I have learned that it is very good actually to ask the people that is that you care the most, you know, what would be good for you? And then I will take that to myself and I will reflect on that. Is that also good for me? And then we can find an, a middle ground or we can agree or respectfully disagree, right? And it takes maturity to even be able to ask that question. So I'm very curious. What do you guys think is a fair price for Bahati Love Notes? Um, again, right now it's at $5 a month, but I'm thinking about uh, increasing it maybe to like 15 or 6 or 9 or 10. I don't know. I feel like that's a big, a big uh, jump, but let me know. Okay, next card we have here is Butter Beans. Yeah, wow. Counting and time cycles. Very, very interesting. What is it that you have with this? Let me show you to you before I start shuffling. Spirit, what is the message that when you say counting and time cycles, I actually don't feel like it's a positive thing. Yeah. Wow. So we have four of pentacles and we have two of wands. So this is the person that almost is comparing and is all like, think of the four of pentacles too, as someone who com who hoards their coin and counts their coin and every night they go to bed and if there's a missing if there's a missing bean or a missing penny or a missing coin they go ape shit ape they go wild so spirit right now is saying be very careful and very mindful about comparison i also want to remind you guys that think about this little bean here um even though two of wands is the card of should I go this way? Should I go that way? I also see this as the card of comparison. So think of that bean getting planted and you watch your neighbor, um, you watch your neighbor and their beans are growing and sprouting, but you are too egotistical to ask, right? To ask them or to gain clarity or to sit or to learn, to observe, then you and your beans aren't growing, you're gonna find yourself with the same situation and over time, you're gonna keep counting, you're gonna have the same experience, zero or one or two instead of a whole lush garden. So be very careful about what you're locked up with and what you're not asking, where you're not asking for help, where you're not, and that's not only just other people, this could be your angels and your guides, definitely. Let them help you instead of you hoarding your wisdom and hoarding your your ego and saying that okay no i'm gonna do this myself try to be more open and fluid to different opinions and i don't want to say take everybody's word as this is just what it is but take it into consideration kind of similar to what i just did <laughs> There you go. Maybe that's, maybe Spirit was just using me as an example. All right, my loves. The lighting is a bit harsh over here. So next video, I'm gonna dim that a little bit and I might even light a few more candles because if one thing, if there's one thing that I love, it's a candle moment. A like exaggerated Leo sun, Leo moon candle moment even though i am virgo sun virgo moon virgo mars if anything that part of me will be like oh let's be careful with the flames 
Leo Moon, Leo Sun will be like, let's light it all on fire. And like these luxury candles. Me personally, I'd be like, mm, let's save this for a special occasion. And that special occasion comes and goes and I won't even light that candle. So it never gets burnt. So like, what's the point? Um, basically what I'm trying to say, trying to maintain my level of professionalism, which what is that even? Because it's my YouTube channel, my rules, my world. And this is our family. It's our little vibe here. Um, but yeah, next time I think I'm going to dim this light because it's not distracting, but it's pretty intense. And it's making my skin look like it's not as smooth as it actually is. I've, I've been working. I'm, you know me, guys. I stay up on my skincare. Definitely stay up on my skincare. So I'm sending you guys my love, my light, and all of my gratitude. So much gratitude for the fact that we were able to take this time together. It did feel really good. So thank you. Of course, if you would like to join Bahati Love Notes, you can do that. It is so nice to be able to sit down and shuffle with you guys. Usually in the morning, we're just sitting down having our coffee. We're vibing. We're setting the tone for the day. Some of you guys watch it as soon as the reading gets uploaded. And some of you guys wait a little longer or the next day. It doesn't matter. All of those readings stay up for you. Right now, currently, the, the rate is at $5 a month for uh 28 to 31 readings on average pretty much maybe 27 because i do sometimes take a day off just to vibe or you know live so let me know again if you what you think about the rates and i definitely want to invite you to subscribe to that and to hang out but in the meantime you guys i'm gonna go ahead and move along get those readings up for you guys and i will see you definitely for sure in my next video okay talk to you later